Well, welcome everybody to Cygnus Cafe. Uh, it's now October 2021 um, and uh, it's uh, amazing the year that we've had um, with all the different talks and we're so delighted to welcome back Isan Lewis today. Isan, um, for those of you who've been following, has done many talks at the Sanctuary, uh, particularly over the last few years. And um, without further ado, I'd like to invite Isan to share with us what she's going to tell us today and, and what to expect from the session. Yes, uh, interesting, slight technical difficulties and starting late, whatever. Um, I, I'm not a, in any sense um, a, a fortune teller. Nothing is cast in stone. Those of you who know my work, have read my work, understand that. Uh, we are creators or creators in the making. But I do think there's things going on at the moment, which we do need to be very aware of, um, to be extra careful, nothing wrong with that, to be extra careful about details. And I'll come back to that in a moment. I think Linda put up on the um, website, I'm talking about the moon, happy to do that. But I think it's quite nice if we can talk about other things as well. Now, I've just got over a flu bug. I'm absolutely fine, but the voice is a bit croaky, so I'm going to do my best. And if it gets a bit weak, um, I know I've got about an hour, Teresa, is that right? We can make have more of a discussion and questions, which are always good anyway. Particularly being online, I think it's nice. Otherwise, I'm just looking at lovely faces, which is all very well, but... <laughs> okay, so... We have a new moon um, in just over an hour and a half, at six minutes past noon, uh, new moon. And I'm sure you understand what that means. That occurs once a month and heralds, if you like, the months to come, those basically four weeks, particularly leading up to the full moon, which will be on the 20th of October. We are in the sign of Libra, the balance point of the year. And we've recently had the autumn equinox, equal night, equal day, that's what the word means, or equinox. And one of the two points of the year where we have to realign and rebalance. The spring equinox in March, uh, Aries rules the head where we balance ourselves. You know, when you feel a bit dizzy, your head tries to move and get a new orientation. And Libra marks the hips, another area where, again, we balance. And Julia, you know from yoga how important those principles are, of course. <clears throat> so the autumn equinox was a funny old one this year. I don't know how you experienced it. I mean, there was a lot of weather changes for an island which generally has had a very, we call it maritime, I believe, or moderate climate. We tend to be getting more extremes. And we, obviously the weather is the emotional band of the earth. I do believe it reflects our own emotions as well. And if we look at what goes on on the world stage geographically, we can see indeed certain countries getting certain experiences, how the weather is reflecting emotions. Just worthy of a thought, if you've never thought that before. And at the autumn equinox, particularly, um, the stock market is very aware of how there can be big dips and rises at that time. And there's an old saying, we have had our grandmothers or mothers say this, that the blood changes at the equinox, blood changes. Certainly, um, there's been research done in, I think it's the, oh, now where is it? Yale University, the neuroanatomy department, sounds good, doesn't it? Um, where they did tests and they found that there are measurable changes, permutations, the nervous system at the autumn equinox. So we can feel as though we need to realign and rebalance. And we're now in this second section, if you like, autumn up to spring. And we are beings of nature whilst we are in bodies. Our souls are from elsewhere. Well, it's a big subject, but they're, invisible in that sense, but they are habiting, if you like, and surrounding a physical body, which is from nature. The word natal, when I do a person's birth chart, we call it a natal chart, the moment of birth. So we are part of nature. And whilst we're in these bodies, 
we are prone to cycles and we are the only species as far as i can tell that don't obey our to like our diurnal cycles think about that for a moment and it, it's only the brain that actually thinks we don't have to pause pause to permeate music dance nature our bodies but our brains oh i'll keep going that bit longer you know got to get it done you know this that and the other it's the outside world interfering and so sooner or later as somebody quite wise said sooner or later um, if we don't find time for recreation or recreation, sooner or later we'll find time or be obliged to find time for illness. And that sounds a bit cruel, but we do get our lessons from our bodies. So knowing when to pause, like an inner dance or piece of music, is so important, even in conversation. So nature is very much part of us, and we are strong, if you like, between the cosmos, the angels and the earth. Lovely thought and how we can actually bring that through and up. And I think that's a real sense of shamanism, the link with the earth as well as with the cosmos. I've been, I don't know how many of you are interested in that subject. I, I find it really interesting and it keeps us quite grounded as well, even very simple exercises. So where are we now? I don't know when, whether some of you have heard me talk before. I know one or two of you had. <laughs> Teresa, bless you. You must have heard me many a time. <laughs> You'll probably repeat my talks now. Um, but it has not been an easy time. We thought back in March 2020, well, I thought this might all be over by May. Um, it's a bit like the war, wasn't it? We'd all be over by Christmas. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> we have learned a lot. We certainly had a, to learn how to pause. And this year now, it's an opportunity to really look at our own inner authority. Yes, we're being told in a way what's happening, what to do, what not to do still. But what do we really think inside? How much is fear and control running us? And I mentioned those two words, fear and control, quite deliberately, because they, along with perhaps more positive qualities, link with the planet Saturn and the sign of Capricorn. And you've heard me talk about this before. Um, and this energy of Capricorn, finding our own inner authority, our inner parent, without rebelling, not always an easy one, or kowtowing to authority, um, is very still up and running. And these, what are called game changer planets, Saturn, Pluto, uh, in the sign of Capricorn until into 2023. And then they move on into Aquarius, very different energy altogether. And Capricorn very much rules the corridors of power, the status quo, um, and growing up. Anyone who's a Capricorn, a strong Capricorn planet's in their birth chart, and they're not perhaps still a child, understand that as they've got older, they've actually got sort of younger, not like Benjamin Button going backwards in time, but psychologically. And they learn to make things simpler, what has been complicated or difficult. So you can nod if you agree with that one or not. If you've got a Capricorn ascendant, moon, sun, Venus, Mars, more the, you know, the faster moving bodies. Um, so we are in still a waiting time, a holding time. This is on a bigger picture. And of course the fast moving planets have some effect and the moon particularly is a time of a change and response. When I'm doing a chart for an event, um, looking ahead, I think that the moon will be the trigger, not necessarily the new and full moon, but the moon will be a trigger for actually ushering that experience on stage. And that applies to things in the world as well. Before I talk more about the moon, um, I'm bursting to talk about this Mercury retrograde. Um, have any of you not heard of Mercury retrograde, that phenomenon? Can't see you all there. So I feel like I could put you all on view, but never mind. Uh, well, Mercury, then, I, I'd assume we know nothing because we've got quite a few people joining us on Facebook. As okay, well, so. yes, and you know I'm quite good at that explaining what it means. It's something you read about in magazines and newspapers, you know, quite often. Now you will now have said it. <laughs> um, Mercury is a planet because each of the planets represents an inner character, an actor on your stage of life. We've all got them. 
Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, so forth. And they all represent specific roles we play. So why aren't we all the same? <laughs> because depending on the year, the date, everything, the planets are in different zodiac signs which modify those roles and amplify them sometimes. And the angles they form to other planets can again expand or perhaps hold back some of those principles. Mercury, our fastest moving planet. Mercurial, we used to talk about mercurial minds, quicksilver minds. And Mercury rules the signs of Virgo and Gemini, just to let you know that, because each planet has a sign or two it's at home with. Okay. Mercury three times a year, sometimes four, just creeps in, um, goes what we call retrograde for about 21 days. And we have it now. Now, what does this mean, retrograde? It means it appears to be moving backward. It's an optical illusion, but it's to do with the speed of the planet in question, Mercury with the speed of the Earth, and Mercury's got a slower speed, so it appears. If one looks in a book called An Ephemeris, here we have it, for, I think it's October up there, um, you can see how the degrees go backwards for a while. And, you know, people take this quite seriously. It has its benefits, because I mentioned earlier quite deliberately, the concept of pausing. And not just our bodies will give us a pause sometimes, but also um, the cosmos will, as above, so below. The planets above will always mirror life on Earth and the cosmic clock, if you like, within yourself when you were born, the timing of pausing, moving forward, sabbaticals maybe, and initiative. And so that's the beauty of astrology in a way. The word planets come from the word wanderers and the word cosmos means order. It's interesting. And of course the word uni, verse, actually does mean one, uni, one, and verse, like if you like the poem, the poem of one, which is a lovely thought. Hmm. Or perhaps one can word that differently. Um, anyway, that'll do for now. And when Mercury is retrograde, particularly when it turns retrograde and, and then when it turns direct and the dates in question, I'm sure you'd like to know them, were the um, 27th of September, that rings any bells, and also the few days around that point. And it'll go direct on the 18th, 19th of October. And again, at the moment we're getting into the middle of it. Yeah, there's lots of little hitches, but it's a more stable point than it will be when it gets toward the 18th, 19th. When Mercury's retrograde, work with the prefix RE. Rethink, re-edit, redo. I say, I say rectify, it's not really a re, but I like that, rectify. Revisit. Take a step backwards or sideways. And it's when the right hemisphere brain, which is a more pattern oriented, intuitive part of us, that comes on stage. So if you're doing a lot of left brain, you know, the logic analysis work, just be aware you need to give space for that right brain activity. People can come back into your life during that time. I don't know whether you've discovered that already in the last, um, where are we now, the sixth? last 10 days okay yeah Teresa was that significant uh yeah a good friend of mine from uni uh, has just reached out so I haven't oh. seen her for about 15 years okay um you can revisit places you didn't think you were going to now I know we're not traveling as much as we did but I've known Mercury retrogrades where I've gone back to countries I thought I'd never go back to even particularly wanted to but for whatever reason I did and not because I knew Mercury was retrograde either uh, lost objects can reappear sometimes look out for that if you haven't already and um even lost opportunities think oh well that wasn't for me or didn't happen they can can come back in and, um, but on another level, it's be extra careful with details, miscommunications, misunderstandings, 
read the small print if that's relevant to something. And um, it's a good time to do an MOT on equipment. Yeah, of any kind. So there's been quite a lot of hitches technically at the moment. It's in the sign of Libra, it just happens. To, and we've got a lot of planets, a lot, a lot of energy in Libra at the present time, the sun, um, Mercury uh, and Mars. Now this new moon at six minutes past 12 coming up is very closely linked. Really, I'm just checking as that as I talk. Yes, indeed, very close. It's actually the same degree as the planet Mars. And I'm sure if we just think about Mars for a moment, you'll understand that's a red planet, red energy. Um, Marshall, we get our word Marshall from. We get quite a lot of words from planets, you know, not just the days of the week. We've got Saturnine, Saturn, we've got Jovial, Jove or Jupiter. Um, Marshall, Mars, you know, Lunar, <laughs> Lunatic, <laughs> uh, the changes of moods, um, the moon, and of course, sunny, the sun. Mars wants action. It's not always comfortable in the sign of Libra because it's more at home in the opposite sign of Aries, it's its own home sign. In Libra, and some of us have it in our birth charts and we're born, we can be very good diplomats, lawyers, even counselors, but we can try and avoid sometimes aggression or arguments and wonder why, when you're feeling quite peaceful, why you attract that to you or somebody's being a bit argumentative. So it's an opportunity, if you have that in your charts, to and Mars is a 20 month cycle, by the way, it takes 20 months to go through the signs. Uh, the opportunity to look at the necessity at times of getting angry, you know, that's clear energy to get it out done with, not to bottle it up like holding a piece of hot coal, you know, and you're gonna be hurt by it. And I always use the example of um, Jesus in the, in the temples, getting angry and throwing out the money changers, you know, biggest peacemaker of all. So there are times when it's okay to make your point, particularly for other people. But Mars is in the same degree, 13 degrees Libra, uh, as the moon. So in some respects, it's quite inflammatory. Um, now, you may not see that in our own personal lives today, or might, but we certainly can see it on the world stage. So between now and the full moon on the 20th of October, there's an opportunity to look at our inner warrior. Is it a martial warrior, like martial arts? Is it a spiritual warrior? Is it an aggressive warrior? And Libra rules relationships. The balance between giving and receiving. So that's not an easy one, is it? That's again, any exercise, dance, yoga, anything working with the head and the hips, as I mentioned earlier, can be quite useful at this time. Um, how are your relationships, even if they're really happy ones? What needs to perhaps be aired, come to the surface? We all need to sometimes realign, rebalance. There's no such thing as um, static balance. Body doesn't have that, nature doesn't. But in our minds, we often think we can. Now, Libra is an air sign, an air sign. That's all to do with communication, connections, thinking. And in an air sign, it's a lovely opportunity to um, look at your breathing. I came across, I'm, I don't know where I read it, I wish I could acknowledge the person, if I read it, um, of taking a deep breath, holding it. And then as you breathe out, to send out like the, like the word love or peace or enthusiasm and you're and you're sending that out to the world and oddly enough see oddly enough you're actually receiving it back at the same time it comes back to you and I do that when I wake up in the morning and I find that you know really quite useful apart from deep breathing which we unfortunately don't do enough of um, it's an opportunity now between now and I would say not just even the 19th of October but even the week afterwards when Mercury retraces the degrees it retrograded over, um, to bring our minds back to neutral. So we can actually see what's in front of our eyes without the filter of old stories. Okay, to bring our minds back to neutral so we can see what's in front of us, perhaps without judgment, instead of using the filters of old stories. 
it's good to have stories, they help us a lot, but sometimes, you know, we need new ones. It's an opportunity to rewire our minds at this time and to quieten the mind and to reflect. You might say, well, I haven't got time to do that. You know, it's just a busy week or so coming up. Um, <laughs> well, um, I often think we fill our diaries too quickly because we're afraid of missing out. Or we like to see it sitting there. When the time comes, we think, oh, I wish I hadn't committed to that. And I could really do with that a bit more rest or something else came in, which it's not so much a question of a better option, it's more the perhaps it's more relevant for our soul. Now, that's a hard one, isn't it? We do have our natural diaries and natural calendars, the nature part of us. And sometimes it's good to follow a prompting. If you're, for example, you're filling in a paper diary, I do, as well as my phone diary. Um, just if it pauses and you think, hmm, maybe I'll just hold on that. Yeah. And this is a wonderful time for really letting things flow, the intuition. Now this month, we've actually got other planets um, going direct. There's been a lot of planets in retrograde, which appears to hold us back, to make us look at our shadow sides more. And Pluto, god of the underworld, um, the darker side of us, the shadows, if you like, where transformation is necessary. Can't get away from Pluto. Pluto has been retrograde for five months. And I believe it's, hang on, I've got to check this out. Oh, I can do it in my ephemeris. Yes, great. On the 7th of October, which is tomorrow, in case you didn't know, Pluto goes direct. Now, that's really interesting because um, Pluto often not just rules the underworld, but things like volcanoes, big earth changes. So maybe, and where we get our word Plut Plut plutocrat from, Plut plutonic, in fact, Pluto was discovered in the 1930s. And when a planet is discovered, it tends to mirror events on Earth a lot. And there was a rise of dictators in Europe, um, rise of psychotherapy, digging into the world of the psyche, definitely linked with the atom, as we know, what led on in the Second World War, and um, plutonium, which is very difficult to store. So Pluto is a planet of power. And when I work with my clients, it's a very important area to work with. How do you feel about your own power? What does the word power make you feel like? Do you empower yourself? Can you empower others? Do you disempower yourself? Do you get into power struggles? Because people get difficulties with our teachers until we don't need them, or they change and we change in that relationship. Well, Pluto goes direct tomorrow. It's like, a, and when a planet moves like that, it's very still in a sense, it stands still. So be aware of your underworld, inner world more. And it's an opportunity to look at the shadows, things you've looked at in the last five or six months and transform, bring them to the surface, make it clean power, if you like, clean energy, as it's called. As we get toward um, the 11th of October, and this, I know this is very short term, but quite useful to know Saturn, our major teacher, where we have our constraints, where we have our boundaries. Saturn was always known as the uh, god of boundaries, the god of endings. It's our inner parent. And Saturn is going direct, which again will make us look at, in these next few days or so, at our own inner authority. Authority is on the outside. They're not perfect. We often put people into leadership roles just to bring them down again quickly, don't we? But do we want to have those roles ourselves? Mainly not. So they have to have a bit of a thick skin, don't they? And um, it's an opportunity to have a reset button about how we view society now, because society is definitely being reshaped. It has to be because of what's been going on, the economy and everything. We are reshaping society, but we do want it to be healthy. And we don't want um, power issues, egos and all that to take um, precedence. And we need to look at that within ourselves. We do need to look at that within ourselves. 
When we get to the 18th or 19th of October, Mercury goes, as I mentioned, direct. And so does, if you like, the higher octave of Mercury, Jupiter, which is the teacher rather than the learner, the pupil. And Jupiter wants to expand, it wants to move, it wants to travel, it wants to be buoyant. So I think that for the last few months or so with Jupiter retrograde, yeah, we've had restraints and difficulties and complications with travel. Things could loosen up more. And the traveler within you, you know, the philosopher, the seeker, it's not just about physical travel. There's going to be a movement forward of confidence. So I really feel as we get into later October, um, a lot will have shifted. And we'll have to wait and see on that inwardly and in the world. The full moon on the 20th um, will be in Aries and the sun will be in Libra because full moons are when the sun and moon are in opposite portions of the sky, opposite signs. There's a lot of um, quite assertive energy at that time. A lot of things like boils being lost, things coming to the surface, not necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes things have to become more or there has to be more chaos before there can be change, yeah? So this month of October, that's why I'm emphasizing the point so much, is incredibly important. We can't always change the outside, but we can change um, our inner world and our attitude. The only thing we really can change effectively is how we react. How we react. And if Aries is the opposite sign of Libra and Mars is about act and action. Libra, if you like, is about how we react. And that's where it's martial arts skills like Aikido and things, whether it's you get a book on it, you understand it mentally, or you like to do those exercises can be quite useful at this time. So nothing is changing too fast. There will be things happening, but this is still a real learning curve as we go into 2022. Where's our faith? Where's our trust? I mentioned Jupiter, which different to Saturn, also a teacher, which is much more the critic um, doing a job thoroughly. Jupiter wants to be enthusiastic. It, you know, it, it's a teacher, hopefully you've had one or two at school where you just like to be around them and how they taught, yeah? And Jupiter has a 12 year cycle, has been moving through Aquarius this year and particularly matters to do with fair play, justice. We've seen plenty of that going on in the world. Um, it moves into Pisces, a water sign in December. The 12 signs of the zodiac are distributed between the four elements. Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces is water. Um, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius is fire. Virgo, Capricorn, but a blank now, Taurus, <laughs> Taurus, Capricorn, our Earth, and Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, Air. Just let you know that, and you can fit yourself into that if you don't know already. If you know your charts, you can actually add up how much of an element you've actually got, you know. Because if you're a water sign, you've got five or six planets in air, then the water is getting a little bit blown, blown away, the feeling trusting side by the logical air. So that's just one way of looking at it. So when Jupiter enters Pisces, which it did 12 years ago, so that would be around about 2010, it is very much the energy of mysticism, of faith, also a fantasy, which we know could be bad and good. And it's where, it's where we want to have beauty in our lives more. We, the performing arts is my little my little thing I have about that, not having enough exposure and help over the last year and a half. And people are still not going to live events. I'm going to dare a wonderful concert in Guildford, wonderful musician they've got and um, classical, and they've got four tickets sold and everyone's missing, oh, we want to go and hear live music. It's not expensive and they don't book in. So I've got you know, a little thing about that because we need the arts, we desperately need live performance. And that's very healing very healing, much more than recorded music, which apparently recorded music may sound perfect, but distorts the higher harmonics. You've got to actually transform them 
and suppose them in your own mind and that can take quite a bit of energy and that's why often you don't feel well you just don't want to have music on but live music covers the whole spectrum it's wonderful anyway um the arts i think will have a much more of a push forward in 2022 and wherever jupiter is moving through your own birth chart then it's an area where you can expand bring beauty healing into your life I mentioned a while back Saturn and Pluto start moving out of Capricorn in 2023. Certainly by um, 2024, we'll see the Aquarian energy of more of equality, of letting things flow, fairness, coming in very much more strongly. I do think we'll be seeing quite a different world at that point. And it's up to what each one of us, like the butterfly effect, to make our footprint, if you like, um, in terms of how we want the world to be in our own personal relationships. Certainly, we've got unlived parts of us. They have been and they are coming on stage. I'd like you to think about that for a moment. Unlived parts, I would see it in the birth chart as areas which are more, not weak, but wounded. They're staying off in the wings, you know, letting somebody else play that part because you've got stage fright. And maybe you've had that all your life. And due to the pandemic and lockdown, people have had to sometimes look at their relationships more closely. And it's not necessarily bad or good, but is this right now? Um, can we find a new way of relating, a new kind of intimacy? What about jobs? Maybe we've lost our jobs. Maybe we've discovered we quite like working from home. Maybe we discovered we really don't like that. Um, maybe we thought, right, an opportunity to learn something new, which we might not have got round to because of time and also inclination and doubt. So this is a time period of looking at these unlived parts of us, which is wonderful really, and letting them have an airing. Letting them have an airing. And this will continue for a while. Definitely will continue for a while. There's just one more um, interesting planetary thing I want to talk about. And I actually would like to open this up to more questions, discussion, if you're happy with that. Um, we've been talking, what, for about half an hour. It's quite a long time to listen to one person. <laughs> um, Venus, lovely, lovely Venus. Venus actually is quite a, be looked upon as an overworked goddess. She rules um, nature, money, um, creativity, and love. And you might think she's overworked, but she doesn't care because she just enjoys herself. That's my joke about Venus. And it's very much about how good we are at receiving. It's a rule of Libra where we got these strong planets at the moment this month. Um, a lot of us as women aren't particularly good in our relationship with our inner Venus. We've been brought up perhaps to be the giver rather than receiver without realizing we can be both. People, you know, like to be given to. It makes them feel needed too. And if you are a giver all the time, it's a kind of, it's certainly not selfish, but it's a protection about being vulnerable. Yeah? So it's, that's a good one to look at. And Venus, there's many aspects to her. And where it is in your own birth chart, a sign of the zodiac, it's in the aspects it forms. For example, if it formed a challenging aspect to Saturn, you might have quite a lot of difficulty in receiving the difficulty of being vulnerable. Because being vulnerable can be manipulative, but generally speaking, it allows you to open up to be creative. I've sometimes given my best talks when I've been very vulnerable. I can't stand up and do that. You know, something's happened in my world. And somehow you get out of your own way more. I don't know whether any of you have found that. And it's different. Getting out of your own way. Letting something else have a say. Like think about a, a stage play, you know, a film. Um, actors go on and off stage, somebody else has a go, but in our own lives, we don't always get that balance right. Some, some astrologer wrote, I thought it was quite interesting that, you know, James Bond, I don't know whether you've seen it, the latest film. I have, and it's magnificent. Um, it waited from, it was due for release April 2020, and it's just been released 18 months on. And 
it's very much about you know the whole idea of the the warrior the hero mars and at this new moon time this is very much the whole thing about initiative who's the inner hero and because that's also a love story not giving any clues away with this bond moving it's a love story too it's very much about the feminine and the masculine oh goosebumps <laughs> and the giving and receiving so i think it's come at that right time to show we are moving forward to get a new kind of balance um it's a kind of a symbol of it um about our inner relationships and in december let me get the date right actually this is quite nice doing it on zoom because by standing up i wouldn't be putting up all these pieces of paper <laughs> um yay uh miss venus gone yes there she is she goes retrograde and this doesn't occur very often about once every 18 months two years and only a fifth of the population are born in venus retrograde which gives a very different understanding of love and spiritual love and people who have it direct when they're born. During one's lifetime, um, it's a mathematical way of moving the chart forward. We call it progressions. Progress Venus can actually go retrograde or direct, which gives you maybe, um, oh, a long time, maybe 40, 39 years of it, giving you a very different kind of experience of how you use your Venus energy how you feel about beauty of love. We're all artists, we're all creative, if we can remember that. It's not about being perfect. It goes retrograde on the 19th of December and goes direct 40 days later, 40 is an interesting number, um, at the 29th of January, 2022. 40 days, think about 40. It comes through loads and loads of things in the Bible, other religious writings, in the body. Um, I can't think of others at the moment, but I'm sure you can. Pop it in the chat if you like. And what happens is Venus appears to go into the underworld. She comes close to the sun and then goes into the under. You don't see her for 40 days in the sky. And in the Babylonian myths, she was in, in Anna going into the underworld to meet her twin dark sister, Ereshkigal, and being stripped of everything and then coming back to the surface. It's a real psychological myth and story. And it's an opportunity and really getting in touch with her own um, vulnerability and even anger. So when Venus is retrograde in the skies, 19th of December, 29th of January till then, we have an opportunity of looking at our darker side of loving, any hurts, rejections, have we dealt with them? Have we forgiven them? People can come back into your life. This sounds quite romantic, old loves and so on. Quite often it doesn't pan out or work through. It can do, but generally not because it's something that needs to be transformed and healed and released. Just to be aware of that. So I think over that Christmas period into January, there will be a lot of forgiveness going on or that potential, new ways of loving, new ways of releasing. It'll be in the sign of Capricorn. So anybody born from early Capricorn to later or know where their Venus is in their charts um, will have an opportunity, particularly in those things I've talked with those things I've talked about. Um, be beautifully, um, computers can do this. And if I had a slide I could show you, but you can actually get it on the web quite easily. Over eight years, it forms five pentagrams which is 72 degrees is the angle of healing, sexuality and creativity. In astrology, we call this the fifth harmonic chart that we not blind you with astronomy. Um, and it forms this beautiful, beautiful pentagram, the number of human beings, arms, legs, head, but also um, it creates a rose shape. And, and to our ancestors, Venus was always associated with the rose. So I'm sorry I can't put one out, but it's something you can easily find the geometry of Venus retrograde on the web. Um, I feel I'd like to more than pause and hand this over to you all. If you've got any questions or any comments, that would be lovely. Okay, Teresa. Yeah, thank you, Sam. Um, and I've just popped that on Facebook as well. We've got um, Quite a few people joining us on Facebook. So 
please feel free to pop some things in the chat because I can see you all. So if you've got questions there, we can relay them for you. Um, just opening up to the group here. Any questions coming in so far? We've been very quiet. <laughs> I think we're just actively listening. And it's just, I think as well, you know, not only are you giving us uh, this wonderful insight, but it's almost poetic the way that you speak as them. So, it's, it, you know, there's that lovely layer to it as well. But um, how would you, um, how would people be feeling during this month? Uh, given everything that you've shared? It's going to be individual. Um, I think we need to slow down a little pace. Um, it's, it, it, we're not here to be perfect. We're not here to be nice all the time. Um, it's about getting a new balance. And if we do, do go over the top a bit and so on, I think um, it's okay to say sorry. A lot of people either over say sorry or they don't say it at all. Have you noticed? In our worlds, I'm a great believer in saying, um, I'm sorry, I made you feel like that, or I said it wrongly. Um, but we have a different, obviously, different ways of approaching. I think there will be quite a few earth changes. You know, this has been going on a lot anyway, and this does affect our bodies. I know when I lived in Southern California in the mid 80s, I could always feel, I mean, there are quite a lot of mini earthquakes, and we had one major one. I could always feel one the night before it happened, you know. In the body, some of us are very attuned to that, and birds and animals certainly know. What else this month? Um, looking at December, that won't help at all. Um, with planets still retrograde now on the 6th of October, then going direct on and off during this month, there's a big shunt forward of energy, and with Mars very involved with the full moon in Aries that's ruled by Mars. You've got this Mars energy, the red energy, which again, we're not very comfortable with that, are we? We see it in the wild animal rather than most of the time, the domesticated animal. Um, it's the red energy, the base chakra. If you feel cold in your extremities a lot, it often means that red energy, which means being able to say no more, have boundaries, get angry, is a little bit suppressed. And you notice if you start to work with that or change it inside, You'll still be loved by the people who love you if you get angry, yeah, in the main. <laughs> or at least if you don't keep doing it. Um, but there is that fear of not being liked. And the problem is if we try and um, be liked all the time, um, that's our Venus. People are going to like us, but we're not going to grow. Mm. But if we actually can say no and assert ourselves when it's appropriate to get that balance, then we will grow, even though we may eliminate some people from our world, but maybe that's overdue if they can't understand the real us. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very much about having that bravery, the courage, and the word courage, core, comes from the French and Latin meaning heart, and rage, if you like, the passion of a heart. Mm -hmm. that. Oh, excuse me. Bless you, Zan. And um, kind of along those lines, then, uh, one of the questions that's just come in is, um, around getting people together to have meetings or thinking about the corporate world as well. But yeah, when would yeah. be kind of a good time to have healthy get togethers? Yeah, good question. I think we are ready. I think there's a lot of fear still out there. Um, there seems to be a polarization between fear. I mean, I had flu very badly recently with most of the symptoms of COVID there. According to testing, I wasn't positive. Mm -hmm. I think we forget there are other major things and we've um, got up our immune systems at all levels. Mm -hmm. Be sensible, but we need our emotional and immune system up, mixing with people. The colour turquoise is very good for the immune system, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. visualisation-wise. Um, it'll be gradual. It will be gradual. I think there's going to be more faith in getting together. Yes, working from home suits people. Maybe it will never go back to how it was before. We do need the team playing. That's the Aquarius archetype, where Jupiter is now, and Saturn. We do need this team playing. Um, a new balance. It's all about new balance. Mm -hmm. So time-wise, I think by the time we get into 2023, the, the vista, if you like, will be much clearer. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And if there are issues, you mentioned about um, 
kind of a, one of a better phrase, lancing boils. This is the time. Mm-hmm. When, when would be the time, you know, for that? For that? Yeah. I think through the full moon time on the 20th, um, what we call Mars is a major player this month, as well as Venus. And they were lovers, Mars and Venus in mythology. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. They, they, they were at it all the time. And um, but they are very, very different principles. And um, obviously, with mythology, you see them coming together, literally. And I think it's a question within ourselves, getting that balance of giving and receiving. Um, spontaneity is good. Impulsiveness isn't so much. Yeah, you get the difference. Impulsiveness is often when we've been holding back and thought, oh, better do it now. And it's not the right timing. With spontaneity, it's almost like a synchronous energy is present. Um, so there's, it feels the right moment. So with Mars, it wants to be very immediate, you know, to the warrior, the martial artist, it knows the right moment. And how, again, how we react to things. In Aikido, for example, which is based on circular movements, they, they, they're trained when you're attacked, <laughs> instead of resisting or running away, you actually can move to the, like a curve to the side and the other person can go flying by you. Easier said than done. But it's an interesting thought, isn't it? And in fact, there is a book, if any of you wanted to get it, it is on Amazon called Aikido, <gasps> giving in to get your own way. And it's about conversations. It's still out there, that book. I gave it to my ex-husband many moons ago and he loved it because he was training at the time. Um, so there's something about the spiritual warrior, the martial warrior, how we deal with that, because we can't avoid um, action. And also, this is a month for initiative, but I think more after the 20th. If you've got any projects in mind, events, whatever, it'll be clearer after then. Hmm. And I've noticed Tan, uh, Tana has mentioned about the Libra and the hips. I'm sorry you've got that pain. But with Mars and Libra, Mars can, um, what's the word? Um, inflame, it's inflammatory energy in the sun there, particularly round about today, maybe. But when Mars moves out of um, Libra, goes into its own home sign of Scorpio at the end of this month, it might get easier, depending on what the circumstances. Mm-hmm. Okay, anyone else? <laughs> Who else is on this? On this um... Ah, there we are, a few more people. Yay. No, no questions, no uh, Yep, yeah, so we've got Lynn's just come in with... Um... Hey. Do you want to share what, what you're sharing, Lynn? I'm going to come off mute. There we go. That was just a fabulous talk. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I don't really notice retrograde Mercury because of all my water and earth. So it was lovely to um, hear your thoughts on it. Mm. And... Um, Libras, I find Libras so hard because I've got so little air. They drive me bonkers. And I've got so many Libras around me. Yeah. Libra. Kind of... I don't know why Libras. I've just had to work with that for some reason. I don't know. And they're lovely people, you know. It's just they me. are, but they're always thinking. And I, I'm a, I feel everything. And it's, um, so that time to reflect and pause, I just love that idea. Yeah, and movement could help you with that, movement. Yeah, I'm very lazy. I get muddy. (laughs) So, and the breathing, it is so important. So, so, and the air is all about breathing. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here when we come out of the womb. If we don't breathe, well, they still do it, but they spank the bottom, don't they? Do they still do that? No. No. (laughs) I haven't had children. I know I was spanked because I didn't breathe immediately. No. I went. (laughs) No. No, but that was that was really good reflection on 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 pausing and rethinking. Oh, and do you know what I, I mention this often in my readings, and I forget to do it. You know, we're all prone to this. Um, yeah, yeah, and I think this is the autumn equinox time, the autumn season. And I think in my last talk, I was um, referring to, and I'll mention it again because I do think it's important. Um, when we come 
it's not too late, but at the time of the equinox or solstice, you know, there's four points of the year, the summer, spring, autumn, winter. I always um, connect within to nature and my higher self. And I ask it to help me in the coming season. And I mean, maybe I mentioned certain areas I'd like help with. And then in return, as giving and receiving again, Venus, Mars, Libra, Aries, um, I will do what I can to help people, my work and in other ways. And I just let it go then. And it's just a lovely thing to set the stage, if not at the actual moment of the equinox or solstice or round about that time. Oh, and when we get to six minutes past 12, I'll be gone by then because I do need to go at some point before then. Um, it's quite nice to set an intent or make a wish on the new moon. Um, yes, just to let it go the month ahead. And if you do know your birth charts, we're 13 degrees Libra, halfway through Libra is in your own chart. It'll show that area of life it particularly applies to. Um, yeah. Mm. So just to let that thought go on the new moon of, of a wish of an intent, it's like a seeding, a seeding. It's, it's at the beginning. And I always say to people, say, well, is that good to do something, have an event? And I think, well, the three days up to the new moon, we're still in it now. It's a dark moon, more of a time for retreat, chaos, letting go, surrendering. Yeah, let it be as it is. And about a week after the new moon, the first phase, if you like, the half moon, it's really a very good time to manifest the seed, the intent, the desire that you set into motion coming up at midday-ish, yeah? So usually a week on um, is quite a good time for the manifesting or for an event if you're doing something. Yeah, and of course a week later will be the full moon, which tends to bring things literally into the light of day or public exposure and um, com complete matters. Mm, so Jenny, also use a pentagram, which I've done in craft for benefit. Lovely. Mm, it's a strange thing. I, I had to make a ball because I was doing a class online mm. um, uh, and it hadn't occurred to me until I'm looking at it now, just over there, that it, I made it out of pentagram, <laughs> to pentagram shapes. And I thought, well, is, is this, it? This everybody loves it. Every time I use it, they say, oh, I wish I had one of those. And I think, oh, so you, you were saying how what a good thing it was. So yeah. I was really interested, you know, that you said about that. Yeah, well, it links with the, um, the, the, the four elements as well. And um, I'm just trying to remember, just a moment. <laughs> yeah, four elements and spirit. Ah, oh. oh, and spirit. So that's the fifth. Okay. Woman. Um, and of course, it's been used in the magical traditions to great effect. Um, the protection obviously reversed it becomes like the devil the, the goat horns and everything has been rather misused that way but now the pentagram itself is what venus creates in the heavens over eight years and um and also the beautiful rose and um you do do look it up on the web you know the geometry yeah i will yes and you'll see it and it's computer generated but how wonderful mm. um, and how interesting our ancestors associated that with the rose i know the rose is very beautiful they just knew things, you know. They could do a perfect horoscope in 5 BC, the Babylonians, and without being able to Amazing. know. And they mm -hmm. certainly knew they were out of planets. Just later on, we thought, oh, it stops at Saturn, you know, until Uranus was discovered. But um, no, they knew. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm going to make more pentagram balls for Christmas instead of the others. <laughs> instead of stars and things. Oh, how lovely. Oh, we'd love to see them someday if it come. Yeah. Know, in Terry Edwards, yeah. But a re really, really lovely talk. And I, again, I was interested with the fair play and justice because being an Aries, ah. <laughs> slightly hot-headed and yeah. all of that, I'm just like, ah! you know, yeah. I'd yeah. like to see that coming. It has its opposite, you know, the shadow side, but also the complementary side. So Aries can often swing into Libra mode and vice versa. Virgo swings into Pisces mode and vice versa. You know, you've always got to see the um, polarity in the mirror. Mm. Yeah, yeah, but it's good that it's coming from Jupiter. So that would be really, really good, I think, to help things out. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, I've got a bit longer. I need to leave us by ten, by about quarter two. But just to say that if you want to talk with me more, find out more about my work, my website's isan.com. That's really easy. Um, Thank you. Just as we're wrapping up, um, 
any final thoughts or anything uh, just to kind of summarize saying uh, that to equip people going forward mm. this is a reset point we've used that word a lot i think in society in the last year or so but this month is a reset you know sort of if you feel you're going forward too much one way, it's okay to take a step back, particularly up to the 19th or 20th. Just be extra conscious, aware in this next, what, two weeks really, isn't it? Yes, two weeks, new moon to full moon. Just step back a little, it, have perspective, be a bit more detached. Think before you react, although if it's really appropriate, react. <laughs> yeah. You there? Wonderful. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Esther. And um, yeah, we've just got a few more comments coming in, which we'll pick up in the cup in a chat. So. Um, thank you for that lovely talk today. Um, and as Azan shared, if you want to know more or have a personal reading, um, then it's Azan.com. I'll pop it in the chat on Facebook. Done that now. Okay. Mm. Um, and lots of comments here saying thank you so much for a very interesting well thank you <laughs> and yeah. um next up in in two weeks time we're back with um cygnus cafe and we've got julie berg will be coming in to to do a talk so again julie's done quite a few talks for us over the years so we'll be delighted to hear i don't know julie if you want to come off mute and just share what the talk will be about if you're able to um, yes, uh, thanks, thanks for that. Um, I think, um, well, so I'm going to carry on uh, a third part of maybe naturopathic healing um, with a view to uh, how our bodies tell us what's going on and with a maybe a view to looking at the, um, the way the body uh, gives us messages, something like that. I don't know, on the day it would just be... Uh, <laughs> intuitively worked through i haven't got a plan yet you can tell can't you <laughs> so but for those people that are new to your work julie it's it's all around naturopathic and uh, insights for healing around that yes i was hoping that we would do some um dream analysis jungian dream analysis uh but so far nobody's jumped up wanting that but um except for you and me Therese. But um, maybe that, maybe next time we do the dream analysis, we'll we'll feel, feel the group and see how they how they uh, how they want to go forward. Awesome. All right. Thanks, thank you, Julie. We look forward Thanks to today. To um, we're going to move into Capra and a catch up. Um, so for those of you that want to stay, or those of you that are on Facebook that want to come and join us to have a chit chat. Mm. about anything you want then, mm. then we're here for probably another half an hour um i know Azan needs to head off shortly five minutes um, yeah good. i'll have five minutes or so just be nice you know and interplay more absolutely and then um also just remember you know it's coming up to midday as it's the new Ooh. moon it'll be a great time to sow the seed of intentions six minutes past 12 i believe a great point yeah Okay. All right, then. Well, we wish you all the very best and um, thank you very much.